Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. Rebecca Magic here. I'm just sitting with all these cards. Cards on cards on cards. And I wanted to discuss this past moon cycle. I wanted to do a little summary and review of what has unfolded this past month. So I have the cards out from the past few readings. And I want to talk about how they're connected. So first we had the new moon. Then about halfway through the moon cycle, I asked for an ally. I asked for a card to show its face, to give us a message, what we needed to keep in mind for the second half of the moon cycle. And then we have the full moon, of course. So in the beginning of this cycle, it really all began with the justice card. So I did a video that was called Message of Justice that is on my YouTube channel. It's also on the Facebook wall. So check it out if you didn't yet. This is where it all began in May 2018, this past moon cycle. We started with this awesome foundation of balance. The message that came through specifically from the Justice card was that enough of us within this one mind unit have done the work in rebalancing our polarities, clearing karma, coming to this space of true justice for one and for all. And from here, we manifested everything else that came with this moon cycle, which I'm going to discuss now. So I spoke about that message from justice very clearly. I mean, I gave it its own video. Um, I shared the lesson that it, came, that it was trying to communicate, uh, that it successfully communicated. And then with the new moon reading this month, it started, boom, with the justice card. So that was further confirmation that, yes, this is exactly where we're starting from. Yes, this is an awesome foundation. And yes, I'm so excited to see what's going to come from that. Because, wow, what a card to have as the beginning for, the, for this new great pursuit. So what we were being offered in the beginning of this moon cycle was a new project, a new opportunity to manifest to build a I want to say like a new kingdom on this earth whatever that means for each of us this moon cycle really uh, began with the opportunity to start a new project here on this earth and a new materialization of our inner world and the challenge in the beginning of this month was really trusting that we did do this work that we did actually finally come to this place of balance. For a lot of us, it was hard to believe that this could actually be true, which can get in the way because when we don't believe that it could actually be, actually be true, then we make it false. Then we create the falsity of the situation. And then we begin to manifest from that space and that's not fun. And so a big, uh, big challenge that we had in the beginning of this month was really believing that yes, we did the work and now it's time to just clear any thoughts sorrowful thoughts, fearful thoughts, negative thoughts away to let those go. See, the three of swords was our challenge. And swords is the mind, it's air, it's our thoughts, and it's the card of sorrow. So it's it's our thoughts around sorrow and, um, you know, whatever programs we adopted from that place of imbalance. It was time to let it go, to really believe we, we've done the work. It's okay. Now it's okay to let the thoughts go and to really align our thoughts with our new reality that we're being offered. The way that we powered through that challenge was the Knight of Wands. It was about taking action on our intuition, really being in touch with our heart, and when receiving those intuitive messages, acting upon them. And when we're in this space, we can no longer be in this space. You can only be in one or the other. You can't be in both at the same time. So, boom. We got through that challenge with grace and ease by the power of spirit, the passion of spirit within our hearts. And then we made it to the future, which was the Knight of Pentacles, taking that opportunity that was given to us, seizing it and running with it, taking action upon it. Now that brought us a couple days, just a couple days later. So we really got to work. That Knight of Pentacles brought us into this two of wands, reviewing our options. Okay. So we were really, it brought us to a place of like, okay, this is real. This is for real. Before I jump in fully, let me pause and let me 
with the world in my hands, right? With all the opportunities at my feet, right under my nose. Let me really discern and see which ones are good for me and plan. Let me envision the future and see what is the, the best opportunity that's being offered to me right now. How is the, the most efficient way to walk this path? What is the most efficient way to walk this path? Okay, we also had the temperance and the fool card on either side of those um, with this transmission right after the new moon. So coming from that space of trusting in divine order, knowing that whatever opportunities are being given to us um, are coming from this place of divine order. That whatever opportunities are coming to us, we want to make sure we choose the ones that are the most, that are going to produce the most sustainable materializations. We had the fool ahead of us. So that means taking a leap of faith, freeing our spirit, being spontaneous, uh, blind faith, really trusting in our path. Even though you can't see exactly what's ahead of you, just having that full trust in a new beginning. This was the card of the future, right after the new moon. It was also the card of the past for the full moon. So this was really the bridge right here. The, the fool was the bridge between the new moon and the full moon. And that's amazing because that's showing me that we, we really made it to the other side by having that blind faith, which is there's nothing else we need. There's nothing else we need. If faith is all we have, we have it all. And so by accessing the, the opportunity within this card that the fool offers us, by taking that opportunity for a new beginning, we find ourselves where we're at now. Now, before I talk about where we're at right now in this full, full moon reading, which I did just the other night, by the way, the 29th, um, in between that, at about halfway through the moon cycle, I asked for an ally, show us a card um, that wants to tell us a message about what we need to know for the second half of this moon cycle. And it was the Four of Swords, which is about integration and rest. So we received that opportunity, that new earth initiation. And then it was time to rest, really let it sink in, which is again reflected in this card, really reviewing and planning. So just letting it sink in, not acting just yet, but really resting. What, what happens when we rest, when we meditate? Things sink in. And we find ourselves back in our center, our heart space. And that's really what the full moon reading was all about. So when we get, now we're, we're, uh, we're getting here to the point of this full moon, the light of the full moon. So we pulled five cards. Four out of the five, the first four were major arcana cards. Okay, it was the fool, strength, the hermit, and death. Very powerful. So our obstacle course is, is strength. What's in between the... The past and the future is this strength card. So we're going to be presented with a lot of opportunities to come into that true strength. And it's strength and vulnerability. True strength doesn't necessarily mean self-exertion or aggression. It just, it means strength from your heart. Soft strength, strength and vulnerability. And the way in which we were going to access, the way in which we are going to continue to access that strength and cultivate that true strength is through transformation. We have to create the space. Allow whatever is getting in the way of us embodying that true strength to die. Let it fall away so that we could create space for that strength to be built and to come in. Keeping in mind the hermit. In order to do this, we need to find solitude, really get in touch with our center. It's so important to really know what's best for the highest good so that we could release our ego, transform our energy from that false pride into true strength, leading us to the fifth and final card, the Queen of Cups, the only non-major arcana card in the full moon reading. The heart of hearts, the water of water, the queen of the heart. So the way in which I see it is we started off this moon cycle from this amazing foundation built upon this justice card. Justice for one and all. Great balanced uh, reality on the inner realm to then pull that out and manifest that in the outer world that we see here in our collective physical material reality. So starting with the justice card, we built upon that. We received this opportunity for building something new on earth, a new earth initiation. 
Then we came into the reviewing of that, the pausing in the middle of it, that integration. Okay, I received this opportunity. What am I going to do with it? What are the different ways it can go? Keeping in mind the highest good of the one and all. Okay. And then trusting. Trusting, accessing that new beginning, a leap of faith, and boom, we are in it. We are on to the next moon cycle, and we are going to be the Queen of Cups. Because through pausing after receiving the opportunity, we got in touch with our hearts and we remembered, okay, what is my intention in even building all of this? How do I keep my polarities balanced within my inner masculine and feminine? If I'm going to be building and I'm going to be active and I'm going to be materializing this new reality on earth, then my feminine side wants to be this queen of cups, wants to make sure that whatever I'm building has its roots in the spiritual realm, in the heart realm, that we keep her in mind so that when we move from the heart space and we're building whatever it is we're going to be building, the threads are all made with love. That love is interwoven into this grand project that, that you're doing, whatever it is you're creating. Because that's really the space that we're all in right now. So of course we want to remember our intentions. Of course we want to be building from the heart. Um, some things that we can keep in mind are, you know, saying affirmations as we go about our building of whatever it is we're building. The more we're in touch with our heart as we're building, the more sustainable our materializations will be the more effective they'll be, the more efficient our process will be in manifesting them. Um, so we can also use our heart as we build by feeling the feeling of what it's going to feel like once it's manifested already, to already embody that feeling in our heart, in our, in our entire being, to hold that image in our mind's eye of whatever it is we're wanting to manifest, not just get so lost in the building and the creating, but to really be that queen of cups, to really be in touch with our hearts and what's happening behind the scenes as we build and to make that connection. Yes, build. Yes, be in your heart. Them together. Build from the heart. So this was all uh, what we have experienced this past moon cycle. Woo! It's a lot. And I think that for the next moon cycle, we're going to see a lot of shuffling around of energies in our lives. Um, people who don't serve the vision of whatever it is you're trying to build, they're going to fall away. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a, 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 a messy or a sloppy falling out. Uh, it can be a mutual understanding that, hey, we need to focus our energies right now. We need to prioritize. We need to make those connections with the people who are going to help us build these projects, whatever it is, because right now we're at such a time where the collective is waiting to see, like, what do you got? What's your contribution? What are you going to build for us right now? And so it's up to us to trust, to have that trust and faith in divine order, know that, okay, like it's about efficiency right now. Efficiency is key in our evolution. So you know, because we're all one, it doesn't matter which faces you call into your reality. You have to, A, trust that they're coming into your reality for divine reasons, for purpose, for meaning. And know that the people that you may have felt attached to or you may feel sad letting go, know that it's still them. It's another face of the same one energy, truly. Truly, this is the science of who we are. And so whoever comes into your life, when you feel it is in alignment with your purpose, welcome them. Be happy for wherever the other people in your life are now moving to because they're doing the same thing you're doing. They're moving in the direction they need to move in. We're all moving in the direction we need to move in to manifest what we need to manifest for the highest good of all of us. So as people shift in our lives, people come in and people go out, allow that door to be open. Okay, any resentment you're harboring, any sadness, those things are going to get in the way of feeling good. Those things are going to get in the way of that beautiful space we should be using to hold and feel the image of whatever it is we want to manifest. So why, you know, this was the lesson in the beginning of the month, why hold on to that sorrow when it's really only in our minds, it's swords, it's our thoughts. Why allow all that crap to take up space in our mind's eye when we should be dusting that out and keeping it open and, and filling it with the visions of whatever it is we want to manifest. This is the science of the mind. If you want to manifest whatever it is you want to manifest, you have to see it. You have to feel it. 
So don't allow that space to be taken up by this sorrow that is just not productive. It's counterproductive. So we're going to see that a lot in the next moon cycle. I feel we're going to see a lot of shifting. We're going to see um, the the opportunities coming to coming to us um, that we're going to need to be discerning of, but also we're going to need to seize in order to build whatever it is we want to build. The opportunities are going to begin to show up next moon cycle. So this is really exciting. Um, we're also stepping into this... Um, Cancer and Gemini phase, so this is very, very much water, very, very appropriate for uh, feeling like we're at an all-time high uh, in our potential. Like we have these beautiful opportunities being presented to us. We're at our prime right now. Um, the I like to call it the Gemi can, the Gemini Cancer cusp right there is truly the pinnacle. Uh, moments because it's like this when you look at the zodiac cycle um from the first sign to the last it's like a story from you know birth to death and that gemini cancer cusp is like the middle point it's the prime it's your mid it's like a midsummer's night dream so we're at this beautiful place to really feel like wow i'm on top i'm ready to start this new project i'm ready to create um, whatever that beautiful project is you've been envisioning and been working on. So I really see that for this next moon cycle is all of these new opportunities showing up for us to begin to materialize that project. So thank you for all of your efforts. Thanks for doing the work, inner and outer. It's time to build. Let's support each other. Let's keep in mind we are in the age of Aquarius, brotherhood of man, up. We're going to be progressive, intellectual. We're going to create new concepts. And through these new concepts, we're going to materialize new buildings, new communities. Let's keep that in mind. Let's help each other. Let's be a community as we begin this building phase. We are building the new earth with all of the projects we're working on individually. What does that look like collectively? Oh my goodness, that is a beautiful thing. I'm really excited to see what manifests um, collectively because each of us are doing such big things. I mean, everybody in my community has definitely been up to something huge. I mean, everybody's really leveling up here, so to say. What is that going to look like as a whole when it comes together? Wild. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. So I'm going to just quickly pull a couple cards that I feel called right now to, to do it. So let's see. Let's focus on this next moon cycle. What is to come for the next moon cycle? What should we be expecting? Okay, so let's see. I pulled a past card to represent this past moon cycle. I pulled a challenge and a gift that are going to get us through to the other card, which is the future. So there are four cards, past, future, and then in between the challenge and the bridge, okay? So it looks like this. Okay, let's pull the first card. Whoa, temperance. Awesome. So that was a major card from this past cycle. So that's awesome. Perfect. So temperance is the representation of this whole past moon cycle in May. So divine order, trust, purpose, meaning, patience. That was all this past moon cycle. Wow, this has been a collective card for sure. Um, our future shows the Six of Cups. This is the card of giving and receiving. And because it's cups, it's water, it's emotions, our heart. Giving and receiving through relationship. Childhood joy and innocence. Nostalgia. So it, to me, what I feel is that we've been doing a lot of work in healing the inner child. And we're going to begin to see the fruits of that. We're going to see the materializations of that in this next moon cycle. And perhaps it's going to be tied into the opportunities to build whatever it is we're going to build. I really see and feel a connection in that. Especially with the Queen of Cups being the final card of the full moon. That was foreshadowing this next cycle. So what it looks like is 
how do we stay connected to that heart space as we're being offered these opportunities to build these new realities? Well, I see that being connected to this. We're going to be able to stay connected to that heart space when we recognize all that healing that we've done around our inner child, the deepest healing we could possibly do. We did that. And now all that work that we did is going to be like an ally. It's going to be like our angels. It's that that uplifting energy that's going to support us in this next cycle to really stay connected to our heart as we build, to give and receive with innocence and joy so that we make sure whatever it is we build has a foundation in this innocence, which is very important. If you don't have this type of a relationship in your connections, especially in your business connections, you want that because you want that honesty and that truth and that innocence, that that um, transparency. If you don't have that as your foundation, whatever it is you build will just wobble and fall. You know, when you go to bed at night and you did your best in communicating, keeping your heart open, you know, being present with people, connecting with, with someone's inner child as you are in your inner child, those things feel really good when your head hits the pillow at night and you can go to sleep real well. But on the contrary, if you don't have those types of relationships, you don't have the innocence in your relationships or the transparency, if there are lies or or dishonesty, deceit, you feel like shit and you're not going to sleep very well at night. So this is an important key in building. So I see how this could, you know, unfold in many ways for us in the next moon cycle. I am anticipating this being... Uh, the foreshadowing of the idea that in order to stay connected to our hearts, we're going to have to be in this childlike space of innocence and pure joy, giving and receiving. Um, and like I said, when I first started this video, this, uh, this reading right here, sorry, um, keep in mind the age of Aquarius, giving and receiving brotherhood of man. These are going to be key factors in staying connected to our heart as we move, move forward in this building process. Woo! Wow. Another collective card just came up and it's the Eight of Wands. This is going to be the bridge to get us from the past to the future and through this challenge of the wheel. So the wheel is a new cycle. Uh, right away I feel something coming through. I feel that we are now on our way to a whole new cycle and, and the way to access its gifts, the way to move into this new cycle with the most grace and ease is to... Boom. Keep in mind this card, the Eight of Wands, signals, signs, and acting upon them. Um, when we get a message from spirit, when an intuitive message or feeling comes in, we must accept it and act on it. So stay aware of the signs. Be aware. Be present. Don't think about the past. Know that you're coming from a place of divine order and you will always be in that space because we move through and upon this field that is in reflection of the, of the divine. It is perfect. It is perfect. So be open. Yes, be excited for this new cycle. The way to move into it gracefully is to look for the signs and act upon them. Don't just look for them and then do nothing with them. That's not going to get you to the other side. Look for the signs. Listen for the signs. Be present enough in each. All you have to do is be present. It's not, it doesn't take, it doesn't take rocket science. Just be present enough to hear, to see, to feel the signs. And when you receive them, act on them. The action upon those signs is what's going to move you gracefully into this new cycle. Which is, again, the six of cups, giving and receiving from the heart, childlike joy. Cool, so that is a lot clearer than I thought. Let's, uh, let's see how this next moon cycle unfolds. I'm really excited to go back to this reading, uh, as the month unfolds and yeah, see the connections. It's always so magical. I love seeing how one reading flows into the next because it really helps to confirm the fluidity of our divine order. It really helps to connect the dots even further. I like to call it my spiritual statistics. It helps me to see what's going on in our individual lives and then what's going on the collect in the collective and how that micro connects to the macro. It's such an empowering tool to do these readings anytime, but then to put them together is a whole new thing. It's like life, how we move through life with, we always have more 
more of the picture in hindsight, right? As we move forward, we're like, oh, okay, now I can see the patterns. When I look back, I can see the patterns. And that helps me even more in moving ahead. Well, that's what it's like when you review the different readings in order. I mean, it's insane how they're so connected. You just often will see the card of the past in one reading be the card of the future in another reading. I'm, and that's like the bridge between the two. It's this direct, really. So just a little recap. We went through May 2018 with this opportunity to begin a new earth uh, initiation, building a new earth. This is happening collectively and it's happening in our lives individually. So we were given this opportunity. Okay. We eliminated all that old crap that we needed to eliminate in order to fill the space within us with newness. But before we could fill it with anything, okay, we released, we opened up that space, we sat, we meditated, we integrated, we rested halfway through this moon. And we received the other part of the message, the feminine aspect of this message. While the masculine was building, the feminine was connecting to the heart. So we know that we're going to be building from this place. Reconnect with the heart, get in tune with that space so that as you do move forward in this next cycle, you're moving from the inside out. So then, looking into this uh, next cycle here, a little look into the future. Uh, we're going to be going through a new cycle here. We're going to be entering a new cycle. And in order to do that, we need to pay attention to the signs and act upon them. The action upon them will initiate this cycle, this new cycle in the most graceful way. And then we'll be moving forward into the Six of Cups. This is how we'll stay connected to our heart as we build, giving and receiving from that space of joy, childlike innocence. All the work that we've done, healing our inner child, bearing fruits now, all the materializations and opportunities that are a reflection of that inner child work we did, healing our past wounds. Boom. I hope you liked that little... Um unexpected sneak preview of the next moon cycle. I'm going to take some pictures of the layouts here so that whoever wants can review them in their own way and see them side to side. I'm really excited. Let's build. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, let's see, stay in tune. I should be doing a daily oracle reading coming up here soon. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please check it out. If you like what you see, subscribe, stay connected. There will be tons of stuff on there. If not every day, at least every other day. Um, let's see, what else do I have going on? I'm available for readings. I've got plenty of availability, so contact me if you'd like a reading. And that's it. That's it, you guys. There's not too much going on. Just uh, the YouTube. Yeah, do it. Do it. It's so organized and beautiful on there. Just video after video. You can see the titles and tune in to whatever is relevant for you and whatever, you know, whatever moment you're approaching the, the great YouTube channel. So when you open it up and you're like, hmm, this video sticks out to me, chances are that's the one that you should watch because it's going to have a message for you. I'll say one last thing. I do have a rating section on Rebecca Magic Channeling. So if you've gotten a reading and have not rated me yet, I would love uh, a rating from you. If you could share a couple of words about your experience, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for sitting with me through this moon review for May 2018. Blessed be as we end this cycle and begin anew. June 2018. We're going to be right in the middle of summer. It's going to be an awesome time. It's our prime. Let's have fun and let's build. Let's build, build, build. All right, you guys, if there's any way I can serve you as you begin your new process of building your new kingdom here on this earth, let me know. I'd love to assist you with a reading. Um, you can contact me. All of my information is on Rebecca Magic Channeling on Facebook. Thanks again. And I'll see you soon.